Hello, cookbook friends. This is Carrie with Cookbook Divas, and I'm here with Katie, who Hi. just spent a couple days researching all of the amazing cookbooks that are coming out the last week of March 2021. We love seeing what's coming out and giving you a heads up on all the cool things going on. And today we're going to go over by categories. We'll start with cocktails. We'll move into dessert and baking cookbooks. We have a couple keto cookbooks to mention, a few ve vegan vegetarian to mention. We'll move into specialty cookbooks, easy cookbooks, and then international cookbooks and a few of the, our most anticipated things that are coming out. So we'll get started super fast. This is going to be a big episode. We'll try to talk fast to get you all the info, but I wanted to remind you to please follow us on your favorite social media platform, whether it be Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, Instagram, we're not on TikTok, by the way, we're mm -hmm. as cookbook divas under all of those. So I'm going to get this week started with a book that I just now, five seconds ago, clicked buy on called <laughs> Wine Time, 70 plus recipes for simple bites that pair perfectly with wine. I absolutely need to own this because I am a wine blogger and I like to help my readers figure out what to pair with the fabulous wine that I tempted them to buy. Uh, Wine Time is by Barbara Scott Goodman, is the author, and Jennifer May is the photographer, and it's a fresh modern follow-up to the best-selling Wine Bites, which I do own, and this has 65 brand new recipes with suggested pairings, and ah, oh, it's an updated edition, but I need to own both because... Why you can't have too many wine and food pairing books. Now, part of the, the contents, of course, is charcuterie boards, and I'm going to skip over the meat part of that. And here's a recipe for pork and ricotta meatballs, which I'm going to ignore. But here's one for bruschetta and toasts, which I don't often think of making because I'm worried that the bruschetta will be too hard to chew or the tomatoes will slip and fall off of it. Ah! Anyway, that is Wine Time, 70 Plus Recipes for Simple Bites that Pair Perfectly with Wine by Barbara Scott Goodman, coming out on March 23. Katie, what's next on your list? So the cookbook on my list is the Infused Cocktail Handbook, the Ooh. Essential Guide to Handmade Blends and Infusions by Kurt Maitland. Uh, so this is a obviously super fun. So you can in this teaches you how to infuse some of your or your favorite flavors or interesting flavors like liqueurs, tea, uh, bacon. Uh, herbs and gummy bears. I love that. Or gummies. <laughs> yes. Any, so it kind of just guides us on what flavors go well, what it, you know, like what things you should mix with, like, you know, gin and peppermint. Uh, you might not want to do it. I mean, it's mm. your experiment, but <laughs> so it just kind of gives us a good guide. It goes through like shrubs and syrups too. So it's a really, really cool, diverse cookbook that kind of teaches you to learn how to make even your own signature cocktails. This is something I definitely would love to do on my free time. I have a friend that has done that with whiskey, and he's made all kinds of cool stuff with it. And um, I'm really excited to start doing it and learning like what flavors go with what. So that's the Infused Cocktail Handbook, the Essential Guide to Handmade Blends and in and Infusions by Kurt Maitland. What's next on your list? It looks super delicious. The, the title of the book just jumps off the page. It says Summer Cocktails, but it's actually called The Artisanal Kitchen. Summer Cocktails, Refreshing Margaritas, Mimosas and Daiquiris, and the World's Best Gin and Tonic by Nick Mautone or Mautoni. It comes out March 30. I love cocktails, if you haven't already guessed that, <laughs> but it includes recipes for non-alcoholic beverages alike. And as soon as I can start hosting parties again, I always put out non-alcoholic options. It has beautiful summary photos. It's divided into sections by the liquor, which I like. And I need to use up a whole bunch of summary liqueurs that I bought, like elderflower liqueur. What do I do with that? So hopefully this book will help, help me figure out what to do with that. It's the Artisanal Kitchen Summer Cocktails by Nick Maltone. It comes out March 30. What's awesome. next on your list? Uh, the next cookbook, or I guess cocktail book, on my list is Tokyo Cocktails, an elegant collection of over 100 recipes inspired by the Eastern capital. When they say elegant, they mean it, because these drinks are absolutely stunning. 
that you the chapters are divided into it's actually quite interesting we've got like classics which i'm assuming are you know from all around the world you know you've got like negroni and um manhattan stuff like that those class staples and then they transition into japanese cocktails they go to daytime cocktails tea cocktails shochu and uh, and sake cocktails and what they consider the best cocktails so um yeah these are just really beautiful drinks if you are fascinated with uh Tokyo cuisine and to like, for instance, Tokyo whiskey is becoming um, an up and coming uh, drink. I know that uh, whiskey has always been a bit of like an American and Irish staple, but the Japanese have been really hammering in their whiskey skills. So they've got some amazing, I've tried, tried it personally, some Japanese whiskeys. I, I need to remember the names, but they are super tasty, very smooth. So that's included in this cookbook as well. So you know, last time I was in Las Vegas, which was over, you know, before the pandemic, all of the fancy high-end craft cocktail bars I went to, I would say, you know, surprise me. And they would, bring me Japanese whiskey that was just amazing and very expensive. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. They're very good. Um, so that is Tokyo cocktails, an elegant collection of over a hundred recipes inspired by the Eastern capital by Nicholas Coldicott. What's next on your list? It is another book by Barbara Scott Goodman and Jennifer May that comes out March 30. It's Brooklyn bar bites, great dishes and cocktails from New York's food Mecca. And what I like about it is I prefer small bites when I'm drinking versus large meals, especially when I can bar hop, you know, carefully without drinking and driving and go to one bar, get a cocktail, have a little bite, etc. And I've only been to Brooklyn twice and I was only going to dive bars with my friend Chris. So I haven't been to all these fancy places, but this food writer celebrates Brooklyn's happening bar culture from the mixologists who craft classic and original cocktails to the, I'm just reading from Amazon right now, to the talented chefs who create delicious dishes made with fresh from the market ingredients to accompany the drinks. And it's snacks, sandwiches, small plates. I love it because I'm not going to make a big old meal and then sit around drinking. This way you can try more. So it comes out, uh, what did I just say? March 30 by Barbara Scott Goodman and Jennifer May. It's Brooklyn Bar Bites. What's next on your list? So we're transitioning into the dessert and baking category, which is Yay. like everybody's favorite. Uh, so the first one on my list is Alaska Sourdough. It's the revised vision. It's the second edition. This is originally by Ruth Allman. Um, this is a bit of like a cult classic among the sourdough bread community because it's so like it's very specific it's alaska sourdough oh. um they go into all these details about alaskan history and like why they have even like a alaskan lore for sourdough mm -hmm. it's a little kitschy it's kind of cute there are 95 recipes in here um this uh cookbook has been in print for over 50 years it's it's a bit of a classic it's cool um and, uh, oh, no, I can't even remember what I was going to say because I was, like, gushing over this cookbook <laughs> yesterday. It's really simple. That's what I was going to say. It The recipe, she intentionally has created these recipes that are just really approachable. And p any, any level can actually make this bread in hardly any time. So having a whole array of, like, it's not just sourdough bread. There's, like, you know hotcakes, waffles, rolls, muffins, coffee cakes. There's a lot of stuff in here. But she makes it very simple simple because you don't need to complicate baking. So I really appreciate that. So that is Alaska Sourdough, the revised edition, second edition, The Real Stuff by a Real Alaskan. This is by Ruth Allman. What's on your baking list, Carrie? Well, apparently there's a baking magazine I've never heard of called Bake from Scratch. And so Bake from Scratch Volume 5 is coming out March 23. It's Artisan Recipes for the Home Baker by Brian Hart Hoffman. And it's a cookbook for bakers by bakers. It, <clears throat> excuse me. It's a it has a beautifully organized index so you can navigate to find the type of things that you want to do. And there's 
five volumes in total with 650 recipes and step-by-step -step tutorials, which I love and rely on to guide you from the beginning to the baking. And it covers pies as well as breads, brownies, cakes, etc. All the good stuff, including my favorite cookies. Yum. Bake from Scratch Volume 5 by Brian Hart Hoffman. What's next on your list? The final baking and dessert cookbook that is on the list is called Just Desserts. Good things come to those who bake. How <laughs> true is that? Yeah. Um, this is a really cute, like, pocket-sized cookbook. It's only an 8 by 6 It's really cute. Uh, so this cookbook um, has... A decent amount of recipes, even for being a tiny cookbook. It's 144 pages, and it covers a bit of your basics, like, you know, cookies and cakes. It even has, like, madelines, which are, those are fun. I would, I've never made them, and I would really love to make them. Well, why don't you borrow my madeline pan that I've never used? <laughs> I didn't even know you had one. I now didn't. I'm going to. <laughs> now I have to. Uh, so I really like the overall design of this cookbook. It's got... Not only are the photos just really beautiful, everything looks really stunning, but it's got like these cute floral designs and it's all bright and just fun and super, you know, it's just quirky. I really like it. So it's time for spring. Maybe you should tuck it into an Easter basket for your niece. <laughs> yes, that would be super cute. I mean, so, she would help baking them, but she can look through it. <laughs> yes, we can inspire her. So it makes... All of these little bakes, uh, they look complicated, but she's broken them down in a very easy way so that, you know, again, just like the Alaska cookbook, um, you can easily make most of these. It's usually just a one recipe per um, dessert. So you've got like maybe a, a few cookie recipes, but it's not like a huge chapter on cookies, if that makes sense, you know, and a few cake recipes that are big staples, like we've got devil's food cake or, you know, that kind of thing. So she makes it really fun and easy to just bake desserts. That is Just Desserts, Good Things Come to Those Who Bake by Charlotte Ree. What's the next category? We are just going to go through two quick keto books. Mine is, and I'm I'm tired of keto diet books because we went through so many of them in January, you know, after the holidays, so many of them came out, but I love Mediterranean food, so I didn't want to mention this one. The new Mediterranean diet cookbook, the optimal keto-friendly diet that burns fat, promotes longevity, and prevents chronic disease by several authors, Thomas DeLauer, Nicholas Norwitz, Rohan Kashid, and Martina Slajarova. Whew, comes out April 6th. And it is, deals with the fact that we always complain about keto. It's typically high in fat and high in red meats. What would I do? Because I'm vegetarian. But this presents healthy alternatives to all those high fat and high in red meats. It mm -hmm. combines Mediterranean diet and keto for optimal health and goes through the food staples you should keep on hand, key points and tips for staying on keto. That's the new Mediterranean diet cookbook, which comes out April 6th. What is right. your keto cookbook that you wanted to feature? Uh, then uh, my cookbook is called Super Easy Keto Cookbook: A Hundred Simple Ketogenic Diet Recipes. Uh, so this one's obviously cool. A hundred recipes, and they definitely keep it simple. It's all a lot of easy one pot, one pan recipes. Uh, this is by sorry if I meant to mention it's by Georgina Bomer, and she. Her cookbook is oriented to like a, a family weeknight um, approach so that, you know, it's really fast and easy. The kids are like doing sports and or whatever crazy activities after school and mom and dad are at work. So something that makes it really easy for everybody and is still really healthy. So one pot, one pan. Uh, so and the recipes, again, are really kid friendly, too, which is nice. Um because sometimes these recipes can get a little, again, the meat heavy. And I know actually my niece isn't a huge fan of, of meat, like chicken she hates. So having some extra like different recipes, because kids love carbs. So it almost seems yeah. like keto and 
and kids don't necessarily go together. So I really appreciate this cookbook. Um, it is called Super Easy Keto Cookbook, 100 Simple Ketogenic Diet Recipes by Georgina Bomer. I wanted to present Jane Devonshire's new cookbook that comes out March 23. She won Britain MasterChef in 2016. It's called Vegetarian Hassle-Free Gluten-Free. Now, I don't usually cook gluten-free, but I... She had me a hassle-free. <laughs> I need easy cookbooks. And this cookbook presents food that she actually cooks at home. So it's not super fancy trying to impress anyone, just food for that families can enjoy, recipes that can be on the table quickly for midweek dinners, etc. And I'm already intrigued because she has a three-cheese mushroom lasagna and spiced oh. fried cauliflower with green sriracha salsa. That sounds delicious. That's Vegetarian Hassle-Free Gluten-Free by Dane, Jane Devonshire. And Katie has another vegetarian or vegan cookbook to talk about next. So I love Jane Goodall. And when I saw this cookbook, hashtag eat meatless, good for animals, the earth and all by Jane Goodall. I Whoa. was sold. <laughs> like immediately I have to get this because Jane Goodall's amazing. Oh my gosh. Yes. This is a plant-based cookbook. So her, usually when you see plant-based, it's always, you know, health and, you know, not eating meat because it's unhealthy. It's all, it's usually health. Let's be honest. So I like hers because it's not just about health. It's about emphasizing animal lives over others, which I think is really unique and cute. Um, the photos are obviously really beautiful. You get to see a little bit of like Jane Goodall's life, you know, out in the forest. Uh, the recipes look really awesome. She's got like a sweet potatoes with yogurt and maple pumpkin seeds recipe that sounds super good good Ooh, like I would yeah. never have thought about that or um she's got these cauliflower pumpkin seed tacos oh tacos Ooh. so good so um if you look inside the the cookbook you'll the the introduction she kind of talk she's got a forward that kind of talks about changing the way we eat doesn't need to be this huge overhaul like we can and a huge upheaval, which it does kind of feel like when you start transitioning into these things. But she encourages us to just, you know, put our best foot forward and like try our best and, you know, do what's great for the planet. And I really enjoy that. So, and I bet that she is wants just to not be super preachy, preachy about it. No, and I really like that. She's just really sweet about it. And it's That's maybe encouraging, not preaching. Exactly. So I really, I, I really love that about this book. So that is hashtag meatless, good for animals, the earth and all by Jane Goodall. What's next on your list, Carrie? There's a book coming out March 23 by Heidi Swanson. It's the third in her Supernatural Simple series. This one is whole food vegetarian recipes for real life. It's 120 recipes. And I just peeked through the pictures and got hungry, except the first one I looked at is jasmine chia breakfast pudding. I'm just not a chia person. I had it this morning. <laughs> well, it doesn't call to me, but feel free to enjoy it yourself. I think chia belongs on chia pets. Hmm. <laughs> but the next recipe that they showcase is asparagus salad with lemony toasted pine nuts. That sounds good. A crunchy peanut and saffron citrus salad that looks amazing and refreshing. A blistered cherry tomato soba looks incredible. That's Supernatural Simple Whole Food Vegetarian Recipes for Real Life by Heidi Swanson. So the next cookbook on my list is called Eat Plants Every Day. Amazing vegan cookbook, delicious plant-based recipes, 90 plus flavorful recipes to bring more plants into your daily meals by Carolyn Warsham and Blair Warsham. Uh, this cookbook's really cool because I, I know in the title it says amazing vegan cookbook, but it actually is appealing to omnivores as well as vegans. So this is kind of a true plant-based, you know, cookbook. It is really plant forward. They really, plant diets are on the, like, 
it's it's a thing like there are so many plant-based things and lots of people are transitioning to plant-based so this this cookbook is great because you can easily incorporate your current like if especially if you're a heavy meat meat eater you can incorporate more vegetables to your meat eating diet self and slowly make your way if that's what you want to be doing slowly making your way into more plant forward um uh, thing and I like this too because there's there might only be like 90 recipes I say only 90 like that's a bad thing yeah. 90 <laughs> recipes are a lot but I like that it spans over many different kinds of cuisine so you've got like French cooking or uh, there's some Italian things in here but then you've got like some Asian and Greek and there's just a lot of different you know res Indian too like there's just a lot of cool recipes that you can bring into your household and encourage plant eating so that is eat plants every day amazing vegan cookbook delicious plant recipes by carolyn warsham and blair War warsham but my next vegan or vegetarian cookbook almost sounds like something you would shout as an insult fast easy cheap vegan <laughs> compliment fast easy cheap vegan 101 recipes you can make in 30 minutes or less for 10 dollars or less and with 10 ingredients or less. Well, 10 ingredients would be a lot. But it's by Sam Turnbull. He's also written Fuss Free Vegan. And he created a blog called It Doesn't Taste Like Chicken. And her this is her eagerly awaited second cookbook. It comes out on March 30. And some of the recipes inside, 101 of them, which she mentions how long it takes to cook them and how many ingredients. 10 ingredient creamy basil gnocchi. A gorgeous Greek bowl. Quicker quesadillas. 15-minute apple chickpea salad, DIY instant ramen soup. I love that. And also ready-to-go snacks, load, like loaded queso dip, Cool Ranch popcorn. Oh. And that, that sounds like a better idea than me just opening a packet of ranch chemicals and sprinkling them over popcorn. Mm -hmm. And then in the dessert category, there's things like lickety-split ice cream, easy-peasy peanut butter squares, brownie in a cup, and 10-minute mini berry crisp, all with vegan ingredients. That's Fast, Easy, Cheap, Vegan by Sam Turnbull. What's next on your list? We're moving on to specialty cookbooks. And originally, I didn't want to include this on my list, but I watched a MasterChef that had a uh, like a contest for fresh fish versus canned fish. And it, this cookbook's called Tinned Fish Pantry Cookbook, 100 Recipes from Tuna and Salmon to Crab and More. This is by Susan Sampson. And I'm not going to lie, for a really long time, I have definitely turned my nose up to canned tuna and canned stuff. But I know, because I've had it, that it actually can taste very good. And it could be very gourmet, actually, if you just know how to work with the ingredient. And I'm properly. sure your cats would agree. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Not my cats. Uh, right. Exactly. So I really like that this is very uh, particular. Uh, you know, this is very specific, obviously, about fish in a can cooking that so it tastes good um, because it can be difficult to make canned food actually taste palatable for some people aside from, you know, like a tuna salad or sandwich. Um, so uh, they've got recipes for like a tuna melt, a crab cakes, which I've had, or tuna croquettes. They've even got like a tuna and olive rotini, a nishwa. Is that how you say it? A nishwa salad? Salad nishwa? Nishwa's. Okay. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah. Um, they have like even a Thai tuna salad, which I've never thought of that before, but that would probably be a really good way to like freshen up canned tuna. Um, so that is tinned fish pantry cookbook 100 recipes from tuna and salmon to crab and more by susan sampson if you're into that kind of thing what's next on your list i need this cookbook it's called <laughs> easy cooking for two 75 perfectly portioned recipes comes out march 23 it's by jenna braddock and she has a whole bunch of degrees after her name that i'm not going to read <laughs> oh, must be a nutritionist uh, I'm excited because I am cooking for two and it's hard to cut the recipe down to the right portion. 
I like eating leftovers and could eat them for days. My boyfriend does not. I can maybe get away with serving him the same thing for lunch the next day. That's it. So she presents advice for grocery shopping and food storage that will help you save money and avoid food waste. Yay. Yay. Uh, she recommends we avoid the jarred condiment graveyard. Oops. Guilty. <laughs> I like that she calls it that at Jarred Con. I actually like them too. <laughs> uh, her recipes take 30 minutes or less, use five ingredients or fewer, or only require one vessel to cook. And I don't mind doing dishes, so that part is not that important to me. But cutting down on endless leftovers is a very, very good idea. The book is intended for couples or empty nesters or singles who don't want leftovers for the whole week. And that's easy cooking for two, 75 perfectly portioned recipes, by Jenna Braddock. Awesome. The next cookbook on my list is the Forager's Pantry Cooking Wild El- Wild Edibles. I don't know why that was so hard. That's Let's by read. Ellen Zachos. Uh, this is a. I would not have imagined this cookbook being so beautiful. Like just the the title, but it is a stunning cookbook. Um, so. Basically, this makes foraged foods accessible and and everyday, simple, appealing, and approachable, which uh, I'm really, uh, I'm a little apprehensive about it because foraging sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> um, but um, so the table of contents is like, she's obviously got her introduction, but she goes through spices and herbs, flowers. I mean, I would love to try to use flowers, you know, from my, my yard to see if That would actually work for cooking greens, fruit, nuts and seeds, tubers, roots, mushrooms. So it's a really easy to navigate um, cookbook. And all of these things seem pretty uh, universal. Like all of these things, I think all of us pretty much have somewhere in our, you know, greens and flowers and mushrooms. Like those are things that at least I, I definitely can find in my yard. And you're um, welcome to come over to my neighborhood where we have miles of wooded trails. Uh, yes, that and is it, true. It sounds like this foraging book doesn't fall on the shortcut, which a lot of them do, of just berries. Because obviously everyone has berries nearby that you can right. forage for. It's too easy. It's like, you're cheating. <laughs> yeah, the, some of the recipes that are in here, like uh, the first one that I clicked on are puff pastry swirls. So I, I'm trying to look through. It has wild greens in there. So mm-hmm. I think that's probably the recipe, the foraging part. And then um, let's see what else. Japanese steamed buns are in here. So oh, wow. it has like ground mugwort. And I would never know where to find ground mugwort, to be perfectly honest. Like, so that's why we need this cookbook to actually figure <laughs> that out. They've got oyster mushroom steaks. Again, foraging mushrooms. They have black uh, deviled eggs with black trumpets so Ooh. yeah so some really unique recipes also elevating a lot of our obviously some of the classic recipes that are out there so that is the forager's pantry cooking with wild edibles by ellen sachos so the next book i want to present is slow cooker central ready set slow 160 all new recipes from australia's slow cooking queen It's part of a series of Slow Cooker Central. This is book six by Pauline Christie. It comes out March 23. And I definitely underutilize both my slow cooker and my instant pot. And yes, I own multiples of each. Back when I could throw parties, I needed a slow cooker for the meat dish and a slow cooker for the the vegetarian dish. So I'm definitely wanting to check this cookbook out. They answer a lot of obscure slow cooker questions like how to use frozen foods or not. Why cream splits, how to clean it, when you add pasta, etc. That is Slow Cooker Central by Pauline Christie. I have one more foraging cookbook called Forage Wild Plants to Gather and Eat by Liz Knight. Rachel Petter Smith does the illustrations because these don't, this cookbook doesn't have necessarily photos, but the everything is beautifully drawn. And the the problem that I was talking about before about like identifying what you know what mugwort would look like or whatever this cookbook goes into that kind of detail. Um, so 
all the plants, again, super detailed, drawn, even anatomically kind of taken apart. Like here's the stem and like what you would use this for. Here's the leaf part. Here's Ooh. the flower. So very detailed in that in that category. Um, for, I don't know. I, maybe I need to actually attempt foraging and not be so lame about it because a lot of people are really into foraging. It's becoming a a trendy thing it seems like well and you go hiking a lot so just bring a little foraging bag with you just keep in mind you can't forage in a state park but if you're on a random trail it's fair game you are so smart i really actually should do that because i see so many cool like mushrooms especially in the pacific northwest are so prevalent and i've always wanted to take a mushroom class but you know there's probably all kinds of things here you know nettles are here i Nettles are here, but there's yes. like so many other plants. I've discovered that the hard way. Right. We've got, I mean, we've got a lot of stuff here. So yeah, I think this is really cool. And then, you know, this could encourage us to even start growing these wild plants and try to domesticate them at home a little bit too. You know, we can create our own like wild gardens and stuff. So this would, this cookbook's really cool. I, I actually really like it. It's very, um, detailed it's got obviously for each little so like a sorrel for instance we've got a couple recipes under the sorrel category so that you know we kind of get uh, used to what kind of flavors or what kind of recipes to use sorrel in and then we can kind of branch off on our own and do whatever we really want so that's forage wild plants to gather and eat by liz knight and rachel petter smith illustrates the book what's next on your list Next is Eat This Book, Knowledge to Feed Your Appetite and Inspire Your Next Meal by Stacy Michelson or Mickelson. It's illustrated with adorable illustrations. It's part of the growing genre of fun education. You explore 99 of the world's most beloved, delicious, and misunderstood foods. And it's part celebration and part education with bite-sized nuggets of knowledge about farmer's market finds, kitchen, pantry staples, and fascinating global ingredients. And it sounds super fun to run through. And it's not just for novice cooks. It's for the food obsessed. It's Eat This Book by Stacy Michelson. What's next on your list? Uh, the next cookbook on my list is called The Artisanal Kitchen Barbecue Sides. Perfect slaws, salads, and snacks for your next cookout. So obviously we're getting into barbecue season. Yay! I'm so excited. This, uh, this comes out March 30th. This is by Adam Perry Lang and Peter Kamensky. Um, so I really like, you know, there's plenty of barbecue oriented books, but I like that they take this and dive into all the different sides because I actually kind of like the sides more. Well, me barbecues. too. Yeah. Uh, Adam Perry is a... Um, He's a chef. He's a cookbook author, obviously, and he's an award-winning pit master with an uh, with a popular restaurant in Los Angeles, which I didn't look up. I'm sorry, I should have looked it up. Um, he there's a lot of cool sides. Like um, one of the ones that I would like to try is a peach and nectarine salad with silvered almonds. I really like that. That seems really fresh, especially oh, after really good. And I never know. Maybe I should read the, the book I just talked about a minute ago in case they mention nectarines. I buy them and they seem so hard and I don't know how to use them. And when do they get soft as opposed to peaches, which we all know, just boil them for 30 seconds and slip the skin off. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I actually, when I used to visit my dad in Colorado, I would live off of nectarines. I love nectarines. They're so oh, good. Oh, did you have a tree in the backyard? No. Uh, that was just the one fruit that they bought every... So I don't know why. Oh, wow. I think that was probably a favorite. <laughs> did they uh, ever put it in the uh, fettuccine Alfredo that they dyed green? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, man. That would be an interesting combination. Uh, anyway, so these sides are really cool. There's a lot of different uh, things to kind of complement what, whatever theme, barbecue theme that you're uh, creating. Uh, they've got, obviously, the classics. They've got some really unique, interesting recipes in here as well. So that is the Artisanal Kitchen, Barbecue Sides, Perfect Slaws, Salads, and Snacks for your next cookout. 
by uh, by Adam Perry Lang and Peter Kaminsky. What's next on your list? It is Cooking with Truffles, a Chef's Guide. It comes out March 30 by Susie Gott Segurit or Segurit, or I don't know how to say that. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, I am fascinated by truffles, and especially because I'm a wine blogger and we have to write about cooking and food, truffles always comes up. I'm terrified of foraging for them because you could die. <laughs> but I would buy them at Whole Foods near my house, and I'm not sure how to cook with them. I know sometimes you shave them on top of stuff, etc., and they're so expensive, I don't really want to experiment. So I'm looking forward to checking out Cooking with Truffles, a Chef's Guide by Susie Got Cigarette. So I didn't realize that truffles could kill you. That's, I had no idea. Well, just foraging for, I mean, they're, they're mushrooms, right? I yeah. I could be wrong, but I'm yeah. terrified. No, I, I, I'm about... totally terrified of, for, yes. For, that's why I think I'm apprehensive about foraging is I don't want to kill myself and eat the wrong thing. Well, mushrooms can mess up your liver, and my poor liver has enough going on with all the wine and whiskey, so I have to be careful. <laughs> I understand. Uh, sorry. Okay, the next cookbook on my list, because, you know, we need to be healthy, is called The Healthy Swaps Cookbook, Easy Substitutions to Boost the Nutritional Value of Your Favorite Recipes by Danielle Davis. Um so these are recipes that are like the healthier versions of things that we already enjoy. So meatloaf, she has like a mini turkey meatloaf. She has, you know, instead of, she's got the Southwest turkey sausage breakfast burrito. I know for me, I personally love stuffing breakfast burritos full of chorizo and, you know, just the fattiest of fat meats and just cheese and, you know, everything I probably shouldn't do. Um, another thing, she, it sounds like she's uh, reducing like heavy meats and, you know, like especially red meats. So no beef and replacing it with like turkey or having wraps instead of an actual burrito, like reducing carbs. This has 60 uh, recipes with 60 photos to si like side by side with the actual recipe. She, she's got an Instagram and uh, she's got quite a following on there where she publishes a lot of her recipes and teaches readers like readers and followers how to kind of substitute things so that eating healthy is not that detrimental, you know, like some of us think that, you know, instead of eating spaghetti, we just eat salads forever, but that's not. And then you know, I put a bunch of cheese and dressing on top of my oh, salad and I, I know add calories right back into it. Exactly. Croutons and all not, the delicious. Yeah. yeah. So um, I like that she's taking all these things that we already enjoy and just, it, just a slight difference and, and cr picking ingredients that are just like a hair healthier and, we won't feel necessarily guilty about eating it. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, learning how to eat a, just a little bit healthier, the cookbook is called The Healthy Swaps Cookbook by Danielle Davis. I think we're moving on to international cookbooks now. Yes, and I have five cookbooks less, left to talk about today. The first of them is Cuba Cooks, Recipes and Secrets from Cuban Paladares and their Chefs. And I could pronounce it Cuba, but I'm American and we say Cuba, so no offense. Award-winning chef Guillermo Pernod and acclaimed author Lourdes Castro unveil authentic Cuban recipes for home cooks, celebrating the bold flavors, creative techniques, and unique inspirations of the country's finest paladares, which means private restaurants. I don't know much about Cuban cooking or Cuban food because as a vegetarian, I've stepped into Cuban restaurants and it's pork this and beef that and pork and beef and ah! So I'm curious to check out this cookbook, which divided into chapters for fresh seafood, meat, vegetables, desserts, and handy basics. There's the recipes that are, I see a lot of pork belly, <laughs> smoked chicken, but here's a black bean gnocchi with culantro butter. I think they meant cilantro, but I could be wrong. A green plantain soup garnished with, you're never going to believe this, popcorn. What? And Malanga tacos stuffed with eggplant, but I don't know what Malanga is. Hmm. I'm super curious to check this out because I know nothing about Cuban cooking and I need to figure that out. 
So I'm probably going to check it out from my library, but I won't get it for a couple months because everyone's freaking out and checking it out. That's Cuba Cooks, Recipes and Secrets from Cuban Paladares and Their Chefs, coming out March 30 by Guillermo Perno and Lourdes Castro. What's next on your list? Uh, the next cookbook is called Mustard, a Treasure from Burgundy by, I'm sorry, I am not French, but Benedicte Bartoli and good. Matthew Sellard. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, so this is a very interesting cookbook that kind of that goes into the history of mustard. They obviously have some recipes. They have gastronomical uses for it, which... That's interesting to me as well. This recipe or this cookbook only has 40, 40 new recipes. Um, I believe so some of the chefs that they pull some of these rest are these recipes from is uh um they're pretty renowned French chefs. Uh, it doesn't list who they are, but you know. Um, but it does talk about like how mustard has evolved and um, influenced other countries like Egypt and Greece and the Romans used to use it to enhance the taste of meat and fish. The Chinese used to use it. Oh. So there, yeah, it's got, well, actually, obviously the Chinese still use it. Lots of these places still use it. So it kind of goes through the journey of mustard. Uh, this is not, so, I, I started liking mustard later in my years just because it's so bitter and like spicy or it was when I was a kid. Now I'm just like, Oh, I love mustard. Uh, so, um, yeah, this is just a really cool cookbook. If you're really into food history, especially like French, um, food mustard's pretty big. Um, and then also just learning how to make some of these dishes, these really cool French dishes. The photos are just glorious in here. Um, I would definitely recommend checking out this cookbook. It's called uh, Mustard, A Treasure from Burgundy by Benedicte Bartoli. What is next on your cookbook list? Next is Water, Wood, and Wild Things, Learning Craft and Cultivation in a Japanese Mountain Town by Hannah Kirshner. It comes out March 23. One night, she was hanging out in Brooklyn. She's an artist and food writer. And she received a life-changing invitation to apprentice with a sake evangelist in a misty Japanese mountain village called Yamanaka. So this is kind of her travelogue memoir of her time there and also a cookbook. There are, let's see how many, not a lot of recipes, but the ones there are very, very authentic. It's a tour through a small town in Japan. And since we can't travel right now, we are armchair travelers traveling through our televisions and our books. And she takes the readers along with her into evergreen forests, rice fields, smoke-filled workshops, and she captures the centuries-old tradition still alive in Yamanaka. And it take I'm just reading off of Amazon. You're introduced in what goes into making a fine bowl, a cup of tea, or a harvest of rice, and introduces the masters who dedicate their lives to this work. That is fascinating. I've got to get this. That's yeah. Water, Wood, and Wild Things by Hannah Kirshner, March 23. So uh, we have, I believe, seven more cookbooks to go through. I know it's been a long list, uh, so I'll try to keep this pretty quick. The next cookbook on my list is Eating Wild Japan, Tracking the Culture of Foraged Foods with a Guide to Plants and Recipes. Uh, this is by Winifred Bird, uh, and it's also illustrated by Paul Point Pointner. Sorry. Uh, so this is a cool cookbook because if you, again, it's kind of like a historical-ish, not necessarily historical, but uh, mostly about uh, domestic foods in Japan. They actually forage a lot of their ingredients, which I didn't realize. They don't actually farm grow a lot of their stuff. So if you're interested in learning about how they forage and what kinds of foods they and, and plants they forage where they do that. Um, this is a really interesting cookbook to kind of look through. Obviously, there is um, there is recipes in here, but we probably, I mean, we could probably find some of these ingredients online, maybe in some Asian markets, but a lot of these are pretty strictly Japanese-oriented foods and recipes. Uh, 
this would make a really awesome gift for somebody like me who's a bit of a Japan Japan What's Japanophile. Your uh, no, is not a year you. From now. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Uh, <laughs> This is a uh, this is uh, three years of research and learning about all this Japanese cool foraging techniques, and it has thirty recipes and twenty five botanical glossary entries. That is eating wild Japan, tracking the culture of foraged foods with a guide to plants and recipes by Winifred Bird and Paul Pointner. What's next on your list? The Italian Deli Cookbook, 100 Glorious Recipes Celebrating the Best of Italian Ingredients by Theo Randall, comes out March 23, 2021. I don't think I've ever been to an Italian deli. Mm -mm. I've been to lots of fancy gourmet stores, but we're on the West Coast and Seattle. Italian deli, I'm sure we have one. I've never been to one. Uh, the Amazon listing says, from biscotti to limoncello, the world's love affair with Italian delis goes back many years. These recipes use cured meats, smoked fish, jarred vegetables, vinegars, olives, pasta, pulses. I think a pulse is a lentil, right? And beans, maybe? Mm. Cheeses and wine. And this would come in handy because I'm a wine blogger, and several of the wineries in our town, Woodenville, Washington, specialize in Italian-style wines. So we should be serving Italian-style appetizers and olives, and etc., along with them. That's the Italian Deli Cookbook. By Theo Randall. So we have five most anticipated cookbooks for the end of March. The first one is Sweet Laurel Savory Everyday Decadence for Whole Food Grain Free Meals. So, um, Sweet Laurel, there's a, so Sweet Laurel Bakery is a pretty famous uh, bakery. I, need to find where but it is very famous uh, by Laurel Gallucci and she already released a cookbook that was mostly kind of talking about her sweets all the things she serves in her bakery that are all dessert or sweet oriented this is the cookbook that talks more about all the savory snacks and dishes that she cooks for her bakery um, but yeah, on the savory side, sorry. Uh, most of these are gluten-free. They don't have refined sugar. They're keto, paleo-friendly, and they're made with whole food ingredients. These look super tasty. Um, she's got like sweet potato and spin spinach empanadas. She's got some salads. She's got a a couple bur like big meals, like big feasts, like uh, meat pies and moussaka chicken pot pies. So this is a, pr this isn't just kind of like, I was thinking a bakery would be like really tiny meals or just like, you know, basically yeah. little treats, but these are full fledged meals in a lot of cases. So I would definitely give this one a look through and that is sweet laurel savory everyday decadence for whole food grain free meals by Laurel Gallucci and Claire Thomas. My next cookbook is Cook Real Hawaii, a cookbook by Sheldon Simeon, who was a two-time Top Chef finalist, and Garrett Snyder. And I don't know much about Hawaiian cooking. Again, the whole vegetarian diet that I've chosen to live with my entire life makes it kind of hard to eat in Hawaii because there's lots of pork <laughs> and fish. Yeah. Sheldon is the grandson of Filipino immigrants, and he grew up in Hilo on the Big Island and experienced the intersection of immigrant cuisines with local traditions. The photography is stunning, and I'm looking through some of the sample recipes. There's a primer on poke. Poke is really big here in Seattle also. There's a recipe for lomi salmon, which looks very uncooked. There's a recipe for pocho, steamed clams with Portuguese sausage. I think I will be skipping this cookbook personally, but I recommend it to people that like fish and meat and pork especially. That is Cook Real Hawaii, a cookbook by Sheldon Simeon and Garrett Snyder. My next cookbook is called Wild Sweetness Recipes Inspired by Nature by Thalia Ho or Talia Ho. So this is the uh, blog. Oh, no. Okay, so Talia has a blog called Butter and Brioche that has won 
uh, the Editors and Readers' Choice Awards for the Best Baking and Sweet blog in Savor Magazine. Saver? She's Saver. Okay, sorry. Um, so I love how fancy you made it. Savor. Savor I know. It looked fancy. I was it like, does. Savor. <laughs> It's not like how I spell saver. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so this says a lot of the recipes that she already has on her blog, but now it's all compiled in a little book for everybody. Uh, the recipes are all photographed by her, just like in her blog. And everything looks really tasty and delicious, like, and, and kind of interesting. Like, she has a bay leaf blondies, which... I would never have thought oh. to put bay leaves and blondies, but um, that might be really good. That she's got good. boysenberry frozen yogurt. Um, she's got uh, bitter nib shortbread. Just a lot of really cute and cool recipes in here. Uh, sh there, She's got, I think it's a, over 95 recipes, but she has 125 full color photos. So, Certain Yay. recipes require certain directions and more visualization, like how to fold, you know, the dough and stuff like that. So um, really awesome cookbook. Definitely recommend Wild Sweetness Recipes Inspired by Nature by Thalia Ho. I think this is your last cookbook. My last cookbook we're recommending for March 2021 is At Home in the Kitchen, Simple Recipes from a Chef's Night Off by David Kinch and Devin Fuller. And they are telling us what they cook when they get home. Yay! Uh, the recipes are easy, perfect weeknight meals. And that makes sense because if they're cooking fancy food all day, when they get home, they're like, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. Done. So that's great. I'm peeking through. I see a California crab roll, spaghetti sofrito, a citrus and almond salad that looks amazing, and an almond and oat crisp with mixed berries. Crisp, excuse me, with mixed berries. And he also includes his ready for anything mother sauce mayo, a raffleatory, guacamole with pomegranate, grilled oh, cheese that you can make ahead. I'm not sure how that works. And I totally want to make onion and brioche soup. That is at home in the kitchen. Simple recipes from a chef's night off by David Kinch and Devin Fuller. And the last cookbook that we're going to talk about is It Is Not Complicated, Simple Recipes for Every Day by Katie Lee Beagle, who is a best-selling author and star of the Food Network's The Kitchen. It's not complicated. Uh, and so, oh, sorry, the Food star, food Network's The Kitchen. It's not complicated. The actual cookbook um, talks about recipes that we can use every single day and actually feel comfortable hanging out in our kitchen and cooking um, every single day. Her book is divided up into cocktails and small bites, salads and soups, entrees, sides, desserts. And then she actually has breakfast and brunches at the end of her cookbook. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's uh, really like all of, she has a lot of different classics in here, like ribs are, you know, or um, she has this Barbecue potato chip crusted salmon with peach salsa, which sounds really interesting. It like the picture is gorgeous. Um, I wouldn't normally, I don't think, eat something like that, but it looks really good. I'm kind of surprised with myself. She has something really easy like lemon pasta. That sounds oh, super yeah. good. A lot of these recipes take maybe a max, maybe an hour, but that's some of the more elaborate recipes. A lot of them take maybe about 30 minutes to make. So if you're looking for something easy from an expert who loves food, I would definitely recommend It's Not Complicated, Simple, Simple Recipes for Every Day by Katie Lee Beagle. That is right up my alley. <laughs> This was our mega episode, our largest yes. podcast ever. We can't help how many awesome cookbooks are coming out in March. It's like this big tsunami of incoming cookbooks. But we're done. And, <laughs> and thank you for listening. If you've made it all the way through, you'll hear another podcast from us every Friday and occasional mini-sodes on Tuesdays and occasional mini-sodes on Sundays, depending on what's going on in cookbook land. Thanks so much for listening.